When we look at rocks, we often see that they form layers, especially the kind of rock that holds fossils tend to form layers, and we call those layers strata of rock. Uh, now, it makes sense that if I've got, say, five layers of rock, then the bottom layer had to be put down first, had to form first. Then the next layer formed afterwards, and the next layer formed afterwards. So it makes complete sense that the lower layers of rock must be older than the upper layers of rock. Now, at the same time, if I look at the fossils that are in these layers, oftentimes you can find fossils that are characteristic of those layers, fossils you find only in those layers, but nowhere else. Um, geologists use this to construct what they call the geological column. And you can find figures of a geological column in virtually any textbook. It has many, many layers of rock and the characteristic fossils that exist in those layers. And generally speaking, if you look at the layers near the bottom, you find fossils of only very simple organisms. Whereas if you look at the layers near the top, you find fossils of very complex organisms. And there seems to be a general progression of simple organisms to complex organisms. Now, if those layers of rock really do represent different times, and if the lower layers are older than the upper layers, this is perfectly consistent with the story of evolution, taking very, very simple creatures, evolving into much, much more complex creatures, and eventually evolving into man. So if the geological column were real, it would be powerful evidence for evolution. The problem is it's not really real. Because in the end, you never see all the layers of the geological column with all those fossils in them. What you find is in one region of the Earth, you find a few of those layers. In another region of the Earth, you find other layers. In another region of the Earth, you find other layers. And the geological column that you see in the textbook is a hypothetical reconstruction assuming what the geological column would look like if it existed anywhere in the world. Now, that's a lot different from hard evidence. In the end, this, this structure of the geological column is put together assuming evolution took place. After all, if I see a, a strata of fossil, a strata of rock that contain a certain fossil in one part of the earth, and another strata of rock that contain another, contains another fossil, another piece of the earth, how do I know which one is older or younger? One way is to look at the fossils. And if the fossil is more complex in one strata, then it is obviously younger than the other strata. But that's, of course, assuming evolution to begin with. And I don't think it's evidence for evolution when you have to assume evolution to put it together to begin with. In the end, I think that the layers of rock in the geological column uh, don't really exist as they're shown in the textbook. Instead, every geological structure is local. And what we have to understand is the local geological structures. And I think these local geological structures, the structure in one region of the Earth, can be best understood assuming that a worldwide flood took place and the rocks we find there are mostly the result of what was deposited during that worldwide flood.